Are you tired of complex financial advice and investment strategies that leave you more confused than confident about your financial future? Do you want to discover a clear, uncomplicated path to financial freedom that actually works? In this video, we're diving into an animated summary of JL Collins' transformative book, The Simple Path to Wealth. Say goodbye to the stress and uncertainty of managing your money. This book, and our engaging summary, provides you with a roadmap to achieving financial independence through simple yet powerful principles. You'll learn how to eliminate debt, invest wisely in low-cost index funds, and harness the astonishing power of compound interest. We'll walk you through practical tips on saving, living below your means without sacrifice, and adjusting your asset allocation as you navigate through different life stages. Whether you're just starting your financial journey or looking to refine your strategy, this video is packed with insights that strip away the complexity of personal finance, revealing actionable steps that lead to long-lasting wealth. Stay tuned to unlock the secrets of the simple path to wealth and empower yourself to take control of your financial destiny. Don't miss out on the opportunity to make money management a breeze and your path to financial independence clearer than ever before. Before we dive into the first idea, if you are a visual learner, you have to check our app, Morphosis. We have animated book summary videos for the best self-development and business books. Click the link in the description to get a seven-day free trial and learn from hundreds of animated book summaries. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload free videos. Idea 1. Debt Avoidance Debt avoidance is a centerpiece in the journey to wealth, according to the guidance found in the book. It suggests that steering clear of debt is a crucial step towards achieving financial freedom. Being in debt is like carrying a heavy backpack on your climb up the mountain to wealth. It slows you down and makes the journey harder. Every dollar you pay in interest to someone else is a dollar that isn't working for you in savings or investments. The book advises starting with avoiding consumer debt, which typically comes with high interest rates and is often used for buying things that lose value quickly, like gadgets and cars. If you're already in this kind of debt, the priority should be to pay it off as quickly as possible. Think of it as investing in something with a guaranteed return, which is equivalent to the interest rate you're being charged. Paying off a credit card with a 15% interest rate is like earning a 15% return on your money, which is an excellent deal. The book also talks about being careful with mortgage debt. Although a home can be a valuable asset, taking on a large mortgage can be a heavy financial burden. The advice is to buy a house you can comfortably afford rather than stretching to your financial limits. It's better to have a smaller home with a manageable mortgage than to be house rich and cash poor. Student loans are another area to be cautious about. While education is important, massive student loan debt can cripple your finances for years. The book suggests considering the return on investment when choosing an education path and being mindful of how much debt you take on for your degree. So, debt avoidance is not just about not taking on debt, it's about making strategic choices so that when you do need to borrow, it's manageable and for things that will help improve your financial situation in the long run rather than impede it. Keep the debt backpack as light as possible so that you can reach your financial peak unencumbered. Idea 2. Living below your means. Living below your means is a straightforward yet powerful concept. It's about spending less money than you earn, which might sound obvious, but it's not always easy to practice. The key lies in recognizing the difference between what you need and what you want. Needs are the essentials, the basics you can't do without, like food, shelter and healthcare. Wants, on the other hand, are all the extras. These include the latest gadgets, designer clothes, or a new car when the old one works just fine. The idea encourages us to take a good look at our daily spending habits. Small expenses can add up quickly, and before you know it, you might be spending money on things that don't add real value to your life, eating out frequently, subscribing to every available streaming service, or buying coffee on the go every day can drain your wallet faster than you realize. By living below your means, you give yourself a financial cushion. This cushion can protect you when unexpected expenses pop up, like a sudden car repair or a medical bill. When you spend less than you earn, you can start to save and invest the difference, putting your money to work for you. 
Over time, the money you save can grow through investment returns and the magic of compound interest. This practice also reduces stress. If you're constantly living paycheck to paycheck or knee-deep in credit card debt, the financial pressure can be overwhelming. Knowing you have money saved up can give you peace of mind and the freedom to make choices that aren't dictated by immediate financial restraints. Lastly, living below your means isn't about denying yourself all pleasures. It's not a call to live a joyless, austere life. Rather, it's about finding a balance. It's prioritizing your spending so that you can enjoy life now while also securing your financial future. You can still have fun, go on vacations, and enjoy life's luxuries. The key is to make sure that these things don't put your finances in jeopardy or lead to stress and debt down the line. If you like the video so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload more animated book summaries. Also, leave a comment if you agree or disagree with the ideas of this book. We read all your comments. Thank you for your support. Now let's continue. Idea 3. Importance of saving. Saving is a cornerstone of building wealth. It's your financial bedrock. When you regularly set aside a portion of your income, you're essentially paying your future self. Think of your savings as seeds you plant today that will grow into a sturdy tree, offering shade and security tomorrow. The key reason saving is so crucial is that it gives you a buffer, a safety net for life's unexpected twists. Without savings, any emergency, like a car repair or a medical bill, can become a crisis that throws you into debt. But with a solid savings habit, you tackle these issues head-on, without the added stress of financial insecurity. Saving also opens doors to investment opportunities. Money sitting in your savings account can be invested in the stock market, and through the power of compound interest can grow significantly over time. This kind of growth is much harder to achieve if you're starting from zero every month because you haven't saved anything. Moreover, when you save diligently, you're working towards financial independence. Imagine being able to make life decisions without being overly concerned about the financial impact. Want to take a year off work to travel? Want to switch to a less stressful job that pays a little less? Savings give you the freedom to make these choices. Starting early is the best way. The sooner you begin to save, the longer your money has to grow. Even if it's a small amount, the earlier you start, the better. Over time, these small amounts add up. Before you know it, what started as a trickle becomes a steady stream, growing into a river of financial resources you can draw from throughout your life. The act of saving also disciplines you to control your spending. It teaches you to prioritize your financial goals and spend money on what's truly important, rather than impulsively buying things you don't need. This discipline is a key trait shared by many financially successful individuals. To save successfully, it's helpful to automate the process. Set up automatic transfers from your checking account to a savings or investment account. This way, the money is saved without you having to think about it, reducing the temptation to spend instead. Remember, saving isn't about depriving yourself. It's about making sure you're not deprived in the future. By consistently setting money aside, you're creating a pad of financial security that not only protects you, but also allows you to take advantage of opportunities to grow your wealth over the long term. Idea 4. Investment Simplicity Investment simplicity is a core principle that guides much of the financial advice offered. The basic premise is to avoid getting tangled up in complicated investment strategies that are hard to understand and often come with high fees. Instead of trying to beat the market by picking individual stocks or relying on fund managers to outperform their benchmarks, the recommendation is to invest in low-cost index funds. These funds are designed to mirror the performance of the entire stock market or major segments of it, like the S&P 500. By doing this, you essentially own a small piece of every company in the index, which diversifies your investment and reduces your risk. A big part of this idea is about acknowledging that most investors, including professionals, cannot consistently outperform the market over the long term. By choosing a simple path, you're placing your bets on the market as a whole, which historically has gone up over time. This approach also means you spend a lot less time monitoring your investments, 
Instead of constantly buying and selling stocks, you can set up automatic investments into your chosen index funds and let them grow over time. You won't need to watch the stock market every day or panic when there's a dip because your strategy is built for the long haul. By keeping things simple, you save on fees, you reduce stress, and you avoid making common mistakes that can arise from trying to time the market or react to short-term volatility. This philosophy is very much in line with the idea that for most people, the best way to grow wealth is steadily and surely, not by finding the next hot stock or jumping in and out of trends. Idea 5. Stock Market Investing the idea of stock market investing presented in The Simple Path to Wealth revolves around viewing the stock market as an effective tool for long-term financial growth. The ups and downs of the market are recognized as part of the investment journey, but over time, the market has historically trended upward, which can benefit patient investors. Investing in the stock market shouldn't be done haphazardly. The book argues the case for a well-thought-out plan that relies on index funds. These funds are designed to mimic the performance of a broad market index like the S&P 500. The advantage of index funds is that they are a form of passive investing. Rather than trying to pick winning stocks, you're investing in the performance of scores of companies, which spreads out your risk. Fees can eat into your investment returns which is why the book puts a heavy emphasis on choosing low-cost index funds. High fees charged by actively managed funds often don't translate into better performance for the investor. By keeping costs low, you get to keep more of your investment's return. The logic behind this method is that most individual stock pickers and even professional fund managers don't consistently beat the market average over the long term. By investing in the whole market, you're much more likely to capture the average market return, which has been quite positive over the long haul. The key is to stay the course. When the market dips, it might feel like the wrong time to invest, or when it's at a high, it might feel like it's too late. The guidance here is to resist the urge to react to short-term market movements and instead keep adding to your investments regularly. This approach, known as dollar cost averaging, helps smooth out the price at which you buy into the market over time, so you're less likely to be hit hard by buying at a market peak. It's about playing the long game with stocks, thinking about decades rather than days or months. When you allow your investments to grow over many years, you benefit from compounding returns, which means you not only get returns on your original investment, but also on the returns those investments have already generated. Stock market investing, according to the philosophy laid out, isn't about getting rich quickly. It's about steadily building wealth through smart, disciplined and patient investment in a well-diversified portfolio of stocks. This slow and steady approach might not be as exciting as some high-risk strategies, but it's framed as a far more reliable way to see your wealth grow over time, setting you on a path to financial independence. Idea 6. Avoiding complexity the idea of avoiding complexity is about keeping your investments and financial planning as simple as possible. It's built on the belief that you don't need a complex strategy to succeed in growing your wealth. In fact, complexity can often lead to confusion, increased risk and higher costs, which can eat away at your returns over time. Instead of chasing after the latest trends, picking individual stocks or trying to time the market, the advice here is to stick with basic proven investment strategies. One of the core recommendations is to use low-cost index funds. These funds simply track the performance of an entire index like the S&P 500, which represents some of the largest US companies. Because they're not actively managed by fund managers trying to outperform the market, their fees are typically much lower. This means more of your money stays invested and compounds over time. The approach also means you don't have to constantly watch the market or worry about picking the right stocks. It's about setting a course and sticking to it, trusting that over the long term, the market will go up, even if it fluctuates along the way. Furthermore, by investing consistently in these types of funds, you're diversifying your portfolio, which spreads out risk. You won't be putting all your eggs in one basket, which can be a riskier move and require more effort to keep an eye on. In addition, this simplicity extends to other aspects of your financial life, it's about streamlining so that you have fewer accounts to keep track of, which makes it easier to manage your money and see the big picture of your financial health. This straightforward approach can also save you time and stress, 
letting you focus on living your life rather than fretting over your finances. Idea 7. Dollar Cost Averaging Dollar Cost Averaging is a strategy that involves regularly putting the same amount of money into investments regardless of how the market is performing. Imagine you have some money that you want to invest in the stock market. Instead of trying to guess the best time to buy with dollar cost averaging, you'd split that money into smaller portions and invest those portions at set intervals like every month. Here's why this can be a smart move. Stock prices go up and down all the time. When prices are high, your money buys fewer shares. But when prices are low, you get more shares for the same amount of money. Over time, this can mean you pay less on average per share which could work out better than if you try to time the market perfectly, which is really hard to do. This approach also helps you avoid making emotional decisions. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement when the stock market is climbing and feel like you should invest a lot at once. Or on the flip side, you might panic and sell when prices drop. By sticking to a regular schedule, you take those impulsive decision-making moments out of the picture. It's a bit like putting your investments on autopilot. You set the course, and then you just keep adding fuel at a steady pace, no matter the weather. This helps to smooth out the ride because you're less affected by the highs and lows. Also, because you are investing consistently over time, you don't need a big pile of cash to get started. You can begin growing your wealth bit by bit. It's a great way to build an investment habit, especially if you're new to investing or you're not quite sure about when to jump into the market. Dollar cost averaging won't always beat other strategies like dropping a lump sum into the market at just the right time. But since predicting the best time is really tricky, this method provides a straightforward, disciplined approach to growing your investments over the long term. It's about playing the long game and not getting caught up in the short-term ups and downs of the stock market. Idea 8. Long-term focus. When it comes to investing, having a long-term focus means setting your sights on the distant horizon rather than the choppy waters you might experience day to day. It's natural for the stock market to go up and down, sometimes quite dramatically, but those who do best are usually the ones who stay the course without getting too caught up in the movement of the moment. A big part of this approach is understanding that the stock market has historically trended upwards over time despite short-term volatility. By keeping your investments in place over the years, you give them the opportunity to recover from dips and to continue to grow. Selling off investments in a panic when the market drops can lock in losses and miss out on the potential gains when the market inevitably rebounds. With a long-term focus, you also benefit from compound interest, where the returns on your investments earn their own returns. This effect can be incredibly powerful, but it takes time to truly work its magic. The key is patience. The longer you leave your investments to grow, the more you can benefit from compound interest. It's also worth noting that a long-term perspective can have emotional benefits. If you know you're in it for the long run, you're less likely to experience stress with every market downturn. After all, you're not investing for next week or next month, but for years or even decades down the line. This mentality helps you stay steady and avoid making rash decisions based on short-term events, which can be detrimental to your investment portfolio. Lastly, with a long-term focus, you're more likely to stick with a simple, straightforward investment strategy rather than chasing after the latest trend or trying to time the market. Practices that often backfire. By keeping your eye on the finish line and not the frequent ups and downs, you set yourself up for a more serene and potentially more successful investment journey. Idea 9. Asset Allocation Adjustments Asset allocation is about finding the right balance between different types of investments to optimize returns while managing risk. Over time, as your life circumstances and goals change, you might need to adjust this balance. When you're young and have many working years ahead of you, you can often afford to take more risks. Typically, this means you can have a higher proportion of stocks in your portfolio. Stocks are known for their potential to deliver higher returns over the long term, but they also come with more volatility. Their values can go up and down quite a bit. As you get closer to the time when you'll need the money, which for most people is retirement, the priority often shifts towards protecting what you've accumulated. You don't want a sudden market downturn to wipe out a large portion of your savings right before you need to start using them. 
This is why the idea of gradually moving toward a greater proportion of bonds is recommended. Bonds are generally less volatile than stocks and can provide a steady income. The shift from stocks to bonds doesn't have to happen all at once. It can be a gradual process and the exact timeline can vary from person to person. It's about finding the mix that aligns with your comfort level with risk and your financial goals. Some people may be fine with keeping a significant portion of their investments in stocks even as they enter retirement because they have other sources of income or a larger nest egg. Others may prefer a more conservative approach, moving heavily into bonds for the peace of mind that their principal is less likely to be at risk. Being aware of your asset allocation and making these adjustments is crucial because it reflects your personal financial journey and the changing landscapes of your life. It is about ensuring that your investment portfolio continues to serve your needs, giving you the best chance to enjoy the fruits of your savings when you need them. Idea 10. Tax efficiency. When it comes to tax efficiency, the idea is to keep as much of your money as possible by legally minimizing the amount of taxes you pay on your investments. This means making smart choices about where you put your money and understanding how different types of accounts are taxed. Picture your regular savings account. The interest it earns gets taxed every year. Now imagine an investment account like a 401 K or an IRA. These are special because the money you earn inside them does not get hit with a tax bill each year. In fact, with something like a 401 K, you don't pay taxes on what you put in at the time you earn it. Instead, you pay those taxes years later when you take the money out in retirement. Think of it as a seed that you plant. In a regular investment account, you'd have to pay a small bit of tax on any new growth every year, like having to give away a slice of the apple from your apple tree each season. But in a tax-advantaged retirement account, you get to keep every apple. The tree gets bigger and makes more apples because it's not losing any along the way. You only share some of the apples much later, when the tree is fully grown and you decide to use them. Now there's also a type called a Roth IRA. With this one, you pay taxes on your seeds before you plant them. That means no taxes while it grows and no taxes once it's time to eat the apples. The trick is knowing which type of account to use. This depends on how much you earn now versus what you think you'll earn in retirement. If you believe you'll be in a lower tax bracket when you retire, then the 401k can be your friend. You get to skip taxes while you're in a high tax bracket and pay them in a lower one later on. On the other hand, if you imagine you'll be in a higher tax bracket in retirement, Roth accounts are attractive because you handle the taxes now while your rate is lower. Besides retirement accounts, there are also things like health savings accounts, which have tax benefits if you use them for medical expenses, and 529 plans for saving for someone's education with tax advantages. The big takeaway on tax efficiency is choosing the right place to grow your money so that taxes don't take as big a bite out of it, letting more of your investments stay with you to grow over time. Idea 11. The role of bonds. Bonds play a special part in the world of investing. They are basically loans you give to the government or a company, and in return, they promise to pay you back with interest. The role they serve in your investment portfolio is like the anchor of a ship, providing stability even when the financial waters get rough. Think of the stock market as a wild, unpredictable ocean. Stocks can be like exciting but risky speedboats that can go up and down rapidly, giving you the chance to make money quickly, but also the risk of losing it just as fast. Bonds, on the other hand, are like dependable sailboats. They might not move as fast, but they're not supposed to. They provide a smoother ride and can help balance out the choppy waters that come with stock investments. As you get closer to needing your money, say for retirement, the thinking goes that you should have more bonds in your portfolio. This is because you might not have enough time to wait out a storm in the stock market. The regular and more predictable payments from bonds become more attractive as you aim for a steady income stream. Moreover, if the stock market is performing badly, bonds often do the opposite. So, if your stocks are down, your bonds might be doing all right, which can help prevent you from losing too much all at once. It's like having an umbrella in a rainstorm. Even if you do get a bit wet, you won't be completely soaked. Interestingly, bonds are not always just about providing income. They can sometimes increase in value. When interest rates fall, the value of existing bonds with higher rates tend to go up. 
This can give you the opportunity to sell these bonds for more than you paid for them. However, bonds come with their own set of risks. For instance, if interest rates go up, your existing bonds with lower rates might lose value. Also, there could be the risk that the company or government you lent money to can't pay you back. But this is quite rare, especially with government bonds. Overall, including bonds as part of your investment mix can be a way to bring some calm and predictability to your financial plan. They help smooth out the ride through the volatility of the stock market and can be a valuable part of a well-rounded investment strategy, especially as you move towards your financial goals. Idea 12. Avoiding market timing. Market timing is the strategy of trying to predict future price movements in the stock market to buy low and sell high. The book takes a strong stance against this practice, explaining that it's notoriously difficult to do successfully. Even professional investors often fail to time the market effectively, leading to missed opportunities and potentially lower returns over the long term. Instead of attempting to time the market, the book suggests you're better off investing consistently regardless of whether the market seems high or low. By doing so, you buy more shares when prices are down and fewer shares when prices are up, which can average out the purchase price of your investments over time. This approach, known as dollar cost averaging, removes the stress and guesswork from investing. Staying invested means that you're also in the market during its rises, which historically have happened more often than not. By not trying to jump in and out of the market, you avoid the risk of missing these upswings. The book points out that some of the best days in the stock market often follow the worst ones, and not being invested on those days can severely impact overall returns. The book reassures that if you're investing for the long haul, the short-term volatility of the stock market should not concern you too much. It's the long-term growth trajectory that matters, which has historically been upward. By avoiding market timing and staying the course, you set yourself up to potentially benefit from this long-term growth without the need to make stressful and often futile predictions about market movements. Idea 13. Understanding the 4% rule. The 4% rule is a guideline that suggests when you retire, you can typically withdraw 4% of your investment portfolio in the first year and then adjust that amount for inflation each subsequent year without running a significant risk of depleting your savings over a 30-year retirement period. This idea is based on historical data from stock and bond returns. To put this into practice, imagine you have a retirement portfolio worth $1 million. According to the 4% rule, you could withdraw $40,000 in your first year of retirement. Each year after, you would increase this amount to keep up with inflation. So, if inflation is 2%, the following year, you would withdraw $40,800. The rule is a starting point for planning. It's helpful because it gives a straightforward approach to figuring out how much money you need to save before you retire. To reverse engineer the 4% rule, you multiply your annual expenses by 25 to get a rough estimate of the total savings you need to support yourself in retirement. So if your annual expenses are $40,000, you'd aim to build a $1 million portfolio. The idea assumes that a large portion of your portfolio is in stocks due to their potential for higher growth compared to bonds. This helps your money continue to grow and last throughout retirement, even as you're withdrawing from it. Keep in mind that this rule is not foolproof. Markets can be unpredictable, and your personal expenses can change over time. It's meant to give a sense of direction rather than a one-size-fits-all solution. Some years you might spend less, and other years you might need to spend more, depending on various factors like health, travel, and family needs. The key is to monitor your investments and adjust your withdrawals when necessary to ensure your savings last as long as you need them to. Idea 14. Financial Independence Philosophies The philosophy of financial independence in the book revolves around the idea that you can free yourself from having to work for money and instead reach a point where your money works for you. This is a state where you no longer need to hold a job to cover your expenses, your investments and savings are enough to sustain your lifestyle. To achieve this, the book suggests that you save a substantial portion of your income. The more you save, the faster you'll reach financial independence. It's not about how much you earn, but how much you keep and how effectively you use it to grow your wealth. Once you've saved enough, you invest those savings into the stock market, primarily through low-cost index funds. 
The goal is to harness the growth of the economy over time, which in turn increases the value of your investments. As your investments grow, you reach a point where the returns on your investments can cover all your living expenses. This idea promotes a shift from working for money to having your assets generate enough income for you, effectively giving you the freedom to pursue life on your terms. Whether you want to travel, work on passion projects or spend time with family, financial independence gives you the choice to make these decisions without being constrained by financial needs. The strategy is to live simply, save aggressively, invest wisely and be patient. It's a long-term game that requires discipline and consistency. But if followed, it promises a life where money is no longer the central concern and personal freedom is the ultimate reward. Idea 15. Importance of rebalancing. Rebalancing your investment portfolio is like making sure a ship stays on course during a long journey. Over time, different investments can grow at different rates. Some parts of your portfolio might start to take up more space than you originally planned, which can change the amount of risk you're facing. For example, if you've decided that you want half of your money in stocks and half in bonds, but stocks have a great year, you might end up with a lot more of your portfolio in stocks than you wanted. This could mean you're taking on more risk than you're comfortable with. If the stock market takes a dip, your portfolio could lose more value than you're ready to handle. Rebalancing helps you stick to your original plan. It's about selling off some of the investments that have grown a lot and putting that money into areas that haven't grown as much. This way, you bring your portfolio back to the balance you want it's important to do this regularly because it helps keep your risk level in check. Also, by selling high and buying low automatically through rebalancing, you're often able to help your returns over time. It's a disciplined strategy that can prevent you from making emotional decisions about your investments. When markets are volatile, it's easy to get caught up in the moment, but rebalancing helps you stay focused on your long-term goals. Doing this might feel counterintuitive at times, because it can mean selling investments that are doing really well or buying more of those that aren't doing as great. But remember, the goal is to maintain the amount of risk you're willing to take and help you reach your financial targets, not to chase the highest returns without considering the bigger picture. Idea 16. Health insurance. Health insurance in the context of wealth building is a crucial element because it acts as a shield against unpredictable and often exorbitant medical expenses. The idea is that while you're working on growing your savings and investments, you also need to ensure that a single health emergency won't derail your financial progress. Medical bills are one of the leading causes of financial distress and can wipe out years of savings and investment gains if you're not adequately protected. The book touches on the notion that while health insurance may seem like an additional expense when you're healthy, its value becomes inarguably clear during times of illness or injury. High medical costs can come out of nowhere, and without insurance, the financial burden can be overwhelming. For those pursuing financial independence, which is a significant theme in the book, having a robust health insurance plan is non-negotiable. By maintaining health insurance, you basically are transferring the risk of large medical costs to the insurance company. This means that for a predictable and planned expense, your insurance premium, you are protecting yourself from unpredictable, potentially catastrophic expenses that could otherwise set your financial plans back by years or even decades. Additionally, having health insurance can also provide peace of mind, allowing you to focus on building your wealth without the looming fear of financial ruin from a medical emergency. It's an essential part of a well-rounded approach to financial planning that prioritizes both growing wealth and protecting it. In advising readers on financial matters, the discussion around health insurance is meant to highlight its non-negotiable role in a comprehensive wealth-building strategy. It's not just about what you earn and save, but also about securing what you've accumulated against the hazards that life can unexpectedly throw at you. Idea 17. Career Advice When it comes to career advice, the guidance offered is fairly straightforward yet powerful. The book suggests finding work you enjoy because you will spend a large portion of your waking hours doing it. Loving what you do not only makes the hours more pleasant, but you are also likely to perform better and consequently earn more over time. It's also encouraged to recognize your worth and not be shy when it comes to negotiating salaries and raises. 
Knowing the value you bring to a company and being able to articulate it is critical. Being underpaid not only affects your current income, but can also impact your overall financial trajectory, as future raises and possibly retirement contributions are often based on current earnings. Additionally, there is emphasis placed on continuing education. Staying current in your field can make you more valuable to your employer and put you in a stronger position if you want to move up the ladder or even if you find yourself needing to look for a new job. Another piece of guidance is to save a substantial portion of your income and invest it wisely, which can eventually lead to financial independence. By doing this, you have the freedom to continue working because you want to and not because you have to. This can relieve a lot of the pressure and stress associated with working life and give you more control over your career and life choices. Lastly, maintaining a good professional network is highlighted as important. By building and maintaining positive relationships with colleagues, clients and other professionals in your field, you create a safety net that can lead to new opportunities and provide support during career transitions. These recommendations aim to balance immediate job satisfaction with long-term financial goals, providing a path where your career can both fund your life and align with personal interests and values. Idea 18. Ownership and Responsibility. Taking ownership and responsibility of your financial life is a pivotal idea that means you are the one who is in charge and accountable for your financial future. This starts with acknowledging that your decisions, actions and habits have a direct impact on your financial health. When you take ownership, you actively educate yourself about personal finance rather than leaving it in someone else's hands. It's about understanding how money works and the various ways you can make it grow, such as through smart investing and saving. Responsibility is equally important. It's about making choices that align with your financial goals. This includes sticking to a budget, saving diligently, and making informed decisions about investments. It also means avoiding the trap of blaming others or external circumstances for financial challenges. By embracing ownership and responsibility, you give yourself the power to shape your financial journey. It means being proactive about reducing debt, learning about the best ways to manage your money, and setting and pursuing specific financial goals. When you own your financial decisions, you can learn from mistakes without letting them define your financial future. Responsibility entails setting realistic expectations for yourself and recognizing that wealth is often built slowly over time. Each step you take, from choosing to save a portion of every paycheck to educating yourself about investment options, reinforces a sense of control over your financial well-being. And with that control comes the confidence to make further decisions that can lead to a more secure and prosperous financial life. Idea 19. Avoiding financial advisors. The idea of avoiding financial advisors stems from a belief that most individual investors can manage their own finances without the need for professional help. The argument is that financial advisors often come with high fees that can eat into your investment returns over time. These fees may not seem significant in the short term, but because of the power of compound interest, over the long haul, they can substantially reduce the amount of money you end up with. The book asserts that the financial industry has a vested interest in making the world of investing seem complex and intimidating, leading many to believe that they need the guidance of an advisor to navigate the murky waters. However, the advice given is that the basics of investing are relatively straightforward. By focusing on simple investment strategies, like low-cost index funds that track the stock market, you remove much of the complexity that financial advisors are paid to manage. Additionally, the book casts doubt on the ability of advisors to consistently beat the market. It suggests that over time, passive investing in index funds often outperforms actively managed funds after you account for the fees. The argument is that most investors will do just as well, if not better, by adopting a simple investing approach and managing their own portfolios. By taking the path of self-education, individuals can equip themselves with the necessary knowledge to handle their finances. The message conveyed is that the time spent learning how to manage one's own money will pay off more than entrusting it to someone else, especially considering that no one will care about your money as much as you do. The book also discusses the conflict of interest that can be inherent in the financial advice industry. 
Some advisors may earn commissions based on the products they sell, which can influence their recommendations and potentially lead to advice that benefits them more than it benefits you. Overall, the point made is that with a bit of education and effort, the need for a financial advisor can be eliminated, savings can grow, and financial independence can be achieved without the extra cost of professional management. Idea 20. The power of compound interest. The power of compound interest is often described as one of the wonders of the financial world. It's the process where the money you've saved and invested earns interest, and then that interest starts earning interest on itself. Over time, this can lead to your money growing at an accelerating rate, almost like a snowball getting bigger as it rolls downhill. To put it simply, when you invest money, you receive returns on your initial amount after a set period. When these returns are reinvested, they too start to earn returns. This cycle continues, with the money piling up not just from your original investment, but also from the ongoing growth of the investment's returns. It's as if your money is working hard to make more money without you needing to do anything. The key part is time. The longer you let your money grow, the more powerful the effect of compound interest will be. That's why starting to save and invest early in life is so beneficial. Even modest amounts can turn into significant sums over the years. This concept is particularly important when it comes to retirement savings. Saving regularly, even small amounts, can build a significant nest egg over a working career. It's not just about how much you invest, but also how long it can grow through compound interest. This is why it's so important to let your investments sit and do their work rather than cashing in early. The patience to leave your money invested and let it compound is what can ultimately lead to wealth. For young people, this is a nugget of gold. It means that by starting to save early, by the time you need the money for retirement, you may have to save much less than if you had started later in life because you've had more time to let compound interest do its magic. In the world of investing, the pursuit of quick wins often attracts attention, but it's the slow and steady growth provided by compound interest that is the reliable path to wealth accumulation. It takes discipline to keep money invested and allow compound interest to play out, but those who do so are often rewarded handsomely over the long term. If you like this video, make sure to check our app, Morphosis. It has hundreds of videos like this one, and you can watch it with the seven-day free trial offer we have. Just click the button in the description and start learning today. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload free videos.